I want to talk about the normalization of these men, these older men going after little girls, because you have to keep in mind, Michael was an older teen at the time, and then at some point here, he starts trying to use his lawyer to stalk her down. It sounds like the lawyer didn't actually do it. It's almost like he asked her, asked him to stalk her down. And you already know damn well that Michael knew that his lawyer or this lawyer was representing the mom. Like it's some calculated thing. But for some reason, when this interview came out, like nobody cares that Michael's stalking some little girl and then, or she was a little girl. And then he waited till she was, he claimed 18 here. And I showed that that wasn't correct and that they lied because on the mom's interview with her, um, she was saying she was just a young girl. And then he was trying to contact um, the daughter through the mom. So these two stories collided together and it was really creepy. And then you see that they were conversing before they went on to the show that who's going to say what? Yeah, it was really uh, calculated here. But just take a listen here. This is what stalking sounds like. Golf and a, and a hot dog someplace. <laughs> when did it start? When was the dating? Well, we first met. She was seven years old and I was 17. This was in Las Vegas. She used to come in. Do you guys notice also, she's like, when was the dating? And he goes right back. He's like, you know, we were in Las Vegas and she was seven. I was like, what? I see my show all the time. We had the only family show on the strip. It's the Jackson Five. And um, she used to come as a little girl and sit right up front. She came quite often. She came with a lot of bodyguards. And, and had you stayed in touch over all those sure, years? Sure, sure. And then she'd come backstage. Then I'd, you know, talk and say hi. And then she'd come again. And I thought she was sweet and loving. And I hope I, I always hoped I'd see her again. And who first talked about marriage? Yeah, so he, he, he had a little crush on her right here. Because he's like, she's so sweet. I hope I see her again. And then she kind of interjects and is like, oh, we didn't stay in touch. Now, it might be true they didn't stay in touch. And he was just talking about how they were talking back there. But they could have actually stayed in touch. That area right there is like, mm, nah, nah. Okay. We didn't stay in touch. We didn't that. stay in touch after that, no. He, he had, go ahead. You want to say what happened? No, later you can with say. Contact you, you have a good memory. No, you said you were going to say it. <laughs> See? And it just shows how they had this, like, conversation before they went on here anyway. It's like, you say this and I'll say that. And she's laughing and it's all this bullshit. Okay. The stalking part starts coming up. First argument okay. here on <laughs> this hour. Um, who who proposed? I mean, how did marriage actually get discussed? Well, well, at first, this is what happened. When she was 18, I used to tell my lawyer. He, see, okay, so he said 18 here, and I believe this was the lie, because if you go back to the other thing, I've already pulled this out a million times, but literally the public is totally fine with stalking little girls. Okay, so even, okay, hypothetically, if you want to believe him, which he's lying actually here, um, let's just say she's 18. This is what he did. Lawyer John Branca, do you know Lisa Marie Presley? He go, well, I represent her mother. I go, well, can you get um, in touch so, with... Okay, wait, wait, wait. So do you believe that he didn't know the lawyer represented her mom? That's, that's the first point here. And so why do you think he would stalk the lawyer? Like, he, he's trying to act like it was just like, oh, it just so happened to be, you know, my lawyer guy... Uh, is representing her mom and so he's calculating to try to get her but according to the mom it was when she was younger but anyways regardless of that fact he's trying to now he's trying to stalk so he's stalking he's going he's like i know my lawyer this guy knows her mom i'm gonna go to him and try to get in contact with the mom so i can get to her so this is what he's doing and he's saying it. He's trying to play it off like this innocence that he had. I don't know. He just, oh, like I just so happened. He just said this. Nobody cares about that, right? Nobody. But that is a calculated move to stalk. So what does he do here? Because I think she's really cute. He'd laugh every time. He goes, I'll do my best. That's what he'd say. Do yeah, because so she. he tells him to go stalk her down. Can you give me information on her? That's what he asked the lawyer to do, right? So let's go back. Who proposed? I mean, how did marriage actually get discussed? Well, well, at first, this is what happened. When she was 18, 
I used to tell my lawyer, John Branca, do you know Lisa Marie Presley? He'd go, well, I represent her mother. I go, well, can you get in touch with her? Because I think she's really cute. And he'd laugh every time. He goes, I'll do my best. That's what he'd say. Then he'd come back. I said, well, did you find out? He said, no, there's nothing. Find out what? Did you guys notice this? He jumped over what he asked the lawyer to do. Did you find out? Find out what? Michael used his lawyer to stalk Lisa Marie when she was a very young girl. And again, he's claiming 18 here, but according to the mom, he's a little younger than that. Because he calls the mom and he wanted to go have dinner with them and bring Lisa. It's the craziest thing. So he's stalking. This is an action of a stalker. So he's stalking and he's so calculated in how he's stalking. He's like, I'm going to go through my lawyer. I'm going to try to get my lawyer to bring me back information about this girl. It's the creepiest thing ever. And men think this is normal. So nobody had a problem with this. And I'm a female and I'm listening to this. I'm like, that's like hella creepy, dude. You're having your lawyer stalk us down. Yeah. And it's like, and then I was questioning, I'm like, how many lawyers did this out here? But according to him, the lawyer didn't seem to play along, but he ends up calling the mom eventually. So, I mean, it, it could be that the lawyer's like, yeah, whatever, dude, I'm not going to play along with this. Or he did, and Michael's just covering for him. That's another thing. But he goes like this. So I would worry him about this all the time. The next thing I noticed, there's a picture on a, a magazine. Worry? Why are you worried? He's like, I'm worried about this thing all the time. Isn't this very delusional? It's delusional because he thinks that they're supposed to be together and what he wants is what he wants. And she allegedly doesn't know any part of this. And so then he, he's talking about how he's stalking her down. I understand about being infatuated with somebody or, you know, because I think everybody's had a time where they're like, oh, I really like this person, whatever, whatever. But would you go to this extent? Because if you do go to this type of extent, it's not a thing where it's like, you know, you're at a place, they're there, you guys meet. He's like legitimately trying to go through avenues to get this, this little team. And he's explaining this and the more he's talking about it, it's extraordinarily delusional. It just is because, watch. In cover where she's married, which really tore me to pieces. And then, really yeah, so he sees, he sees this picture of them married to somebody else. And he's like, I had this like delusional thing that she's supposed to be with me. So he's thinking about this as she's a kid. So they didn't even meet. Do you understand this, you guys? He's claiming and she's claiming at this time that the only time they met was when she was seven. And then they never talked in between it. And all of a sudden he's like, I want to marry her. He doesn't know her as an adult. Nothing. They're not even dating nothing and he's like i'm gonna marry her she's gonna be mine he allegedly doesn't know her she's a property she's an object and they've never met in between that time apparently only seven that's what they were stating and he's like she's supposed to be mine i'm like how fucking delusional and creepy is this because they didn't even meet they didn't go on dates and then like he fell in love with, you know what i mean it's not even like that He's like, she's a, you know, this type of thing. So let's see what he says right here. Felt that was supposed to be me. I really did. Yeah. He, what, he's like, I felt it was supposed to be me married to her. It's like, did they even date? What was the countdown to your marriage? Tell me who said the word marriage first. I did. He did. I did. When? Where? When? On when? the telephone. <clears throat> on oh, the yeah, telephone. yeah, on the telephone. He first asked me. When? We were dating now for four months. Um, right? Four months? I don't remember. Well, anyway, we were spending a lot of time together. I don't know how it didn't He already wanted to marry her before they went on these dates. She adds that in later. So I was like, this whole thing is psychotic. Anyway, that was my main point on this because Pierce Morgan wanted to do that thing on the stalker thing. And I did this long thing on it. And I was like, I don't think there's a really good way to tackle this topic because it's so broad. It's a thing where men promoted stalking women like the entire history here. And then it goes into this thing where it's reminding me of creepy Matt Lauer when he did those interviews with victims and he's just creepy ass like the whole time and he's a perpetrator. And so it's like you have these men going at women 
And it's like, oh, we're going to ignore men's conduct because we're supposed to be acceptable, you know, except men being stalkers. And yet, if a woman does it, oh, that's the worst thing. We need to come out with our knives out. And I'm like, dude, what about this? This conduct right here has been the most okay conduct ever. And it's delus it is delusional. It is. And I think a lot of people, like, there's a lot of fans, like, you, you have this idea, like, God, I would love to marry him because you're like, oh, this, this entertainer, and you like the idea of the entertainer, but do you really know this guy? No, you don't. And so, it's that thing, and it's delusional, but he creates the delusion, but he's actually acting out and being a stalker, and he's like, I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be married to her, and so, like, my lawyer needs to go stalk her down for me. And the last time I even met her was when she was seven. Uh, anybody have a problem with this? Uh, I did, and I kept pulling it out. And they're pulling the stalker topic out, and then they're calling it delusional. And I'm like, well, okay, what about this? How come it's okay when a man does it? Because this has been the most acceptable thing in society. It's been on TV, it gets promoted on TV, it gets promoted in books, it gets promoted everywhere. It's, isn't it hot that some guy drives up to your house and he's sitting there dreaming about being with you and you don't even know he's outside? Th this was like the premises of like a lot of movies and stuff when we were younger. And I was saying like um, with entertainers and stuff, there's this line, you know, it's like your fandom to being overly psychotic. And in the reversal that the artist is being the psychotic delusional piece of shit. So it's not just one side. It's like there's this dynamic where I, you know, we see it on both ends, right? You may see fans doing this thing. Um, but then there's actually a lot of men, a lot of entertainers that have this being delusional and doing shit like this. And it's scary. Like, I mean, it's it, it, this thing right here. I don't even know how this, it, she, how she normalized some shit like that. Cause I know you look at it and they're like, oh, you know, it's the greatest thing. Cause he's supposed to put the first moves. It's like, dude, the dude's like planning a delusional wedding with you. And the last time he seen you was seven. I mean, that's hella disturbing. And then he's trying to stalk you. Like he's stalking you. He's openly saying he's, stalk and this is why, you know, he's delusional. Because he's not trying to hide it. The thing with people who are delusional, they'll say the truth because this is their reality of what they think is normal versus some total. I mean, he's also probably a socio here, but the lying socio, the pathological liar knows this sounds wrong. And they'll say something to cover up the fact that they're a total stalker. They wouldn't have brought up, oh, I brought up my lawyer to go stalk him out. No, they would sit there and be like, um, we ran into each other somewhere. We went on some dates and then, you know, I fell in love and then we got married. Even though the truth may be, I stalked her down. Like they wouldn't tell you that. The delusional person is just like, yeah, what? This is my reality. I, why would I question it? I'm in this state of psychoticness. Yeah, it's kind of like that thing. That's why I said, I go, there's a difference in it. And I guess the delusional person could be a socio too. I consider them all, but, uh, but there is kind of a difference in how certain ones answer and then other ones don't. Cause you could tell when they're lying, when they know damn well, they're lying cause they know what they're doing is wrong. And so they'll cover it up. The ones that have major mental illnesses and being really delusional, why would they cover something up that they think is totally normal and fine? And cause that's what they believe. Anyway, so I just wanted to throw that out there. And Michael was a stalker. Oh, big time. So anyways, I think everybody has done this conduct um, at one point or another, be it when you were a little kid or later, and not perceive what you were doing as stalking. I honest to God, when I was going through this, I was like thinking of a million things of what everybody did. And I was like, oh yeah, I guess that could be considered that. You know, this and that and this and that. The intention... Um, Maybe the thing that's normalizing it. And you know that the public is a stalker if you listen to this and not react. So that's how you know the grimming and the normalization and everything else where the public is not reacting to a stalker.
And I think everybody's been guilty of this in some which way, shape or form. And it just could be like, I'll use my friend's example because I was trying to do it on this other thing, but I'll just throw it here. And my friend was upset because her boyfriend turned gay. And so she wanted to go follow him around to see like if he's hooking up with these gay guys somewhere. And she's not, she's not violent. She's not crazy. She's none of these things. I think it had to do with her, her, her mindset. I think about it was, um, she didn't believe it or something. I don't know. There's something weird to it. And I think she took it personal. So she asked me to go drive her to this area where all the gay guys hang out to where they were meeting up out in sack. It was like this whole thing. I didn't mind doing it. I was like, this is interesting. This is what they do. I was like, this is me. But she's there for a different reason. So she has me park. And then basically, we're stalking. I mean, basically, at the end of the day. And so that's a context of that one. And so the mindset of it wasn't like, oh, I'm trying to like, you know, go sexually harm somebody or think I'm getting married to him or anything like that. But it was a form of stalking because it's like, what the hell are we doing? And what is the purpose of this? And why do you need to see this? And you're doing something where you're, I don't know, it's just this action. And I was like, yeah, you know how normalized that is, though? It was so normalized. And for Gen X, oh, God. That's why I was like, when I was looking at this, I was like, this is a hard topic to tackle because it isn't just, oh, somebody has a mental illness because she didn't have a mental illness. And those people do exist. And the it, just because the MO may be different, the action of the stalking is not different. So the action. And so, yeah, I was looking at a whole, and then some celebrities have done it, um, breaking into celebrity houses before they were famous. Um, and this is women. Um, but the thing was, is that men throughout history had promoted this because they were supposed to come and get us and catch us and do all this crap. Right. So they promoted this conduct. So a lot of us have to deal with this, but it was also so normalized that the females will do it just because the society normalizes doing crap like this. And it's uncut. Like I, I was trying to tackle, I go, God, this is an uncomfortable topic because we're dealing with, this is not only about like sexual assault. We deal with a society that's all pro rape and everything. I was like, yeah, this would be included in it. Cause it's another one of those things where it's like, we don't care about your agency. And I was like, this is interesting. Cause it's, it's complex and i was like yeah there was there was situations where like people you know you got people pushing you into weird situations and no it was like i was trying to tackle it i go god this is a hard one because it it it, it has effect it has affected everybody across the board and the way that people are viewing it like they'll look at this and then try to justify it and i was like nope and that's the only way that everybody here watched this a long time ago. When was this? 95, right? Where everybody's like, eh, you know, whatever. A little stalking. Psh, stalking a little girl. You wanted the little girl at seven. Okay. Um, this ain't a big deal. That's where 95 was. Would I have reacted to this in 95? No. It was so common. It was so common. So I'm like, if anybody's going to start pointing fingers... The, the what you look at is where it began and then you tackle men with their behaviors and so they don't promote it and then other people don't do it i mean there's that thing with people that are delusional like legitimately you know this thing um where they need to get psychiatric help i mean michael did not so i mean he has all the money in the world to go stalk anyone I mean, that's what he did. I mean, th what is debatable about this? And why do people okay this behavior? See, you don't know him. That's the thing. It's like that. I mean, and, and <laughs> you don't really know him. Like, he's so vindictive. It's just he's calculated. And the calculation literally shows here. And he's jumping around. And nobody questions what he's saying. And he jumped over what he told the lawyer to do, which was the creep. I go, they should be arrested. If that lawyer actually helped him out, uh, you shouldn't be going stalking anybody's client's kid out. I, I don't know. He may not have done it because it, it, it sounded like, 
I don't know. The way he made it sound was like he tried to get the lawyer to do it. And the lawyer just was like, oh, yeah, I know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But it could be a whole different thing. And he could have had another lawyer do it. He could have had a lot of people do it. And that's why I don't trust none of these guys. Because I'll show up somewhere and all of a sudden something bad happens. They treat me like shit. And like, I'm like, how do people know I'm here? You know, or, you know, some other situation going on. And, um, yeah, and then people were trying to obtain information from me. And it's like, I've been overly honest about everything. I mean, ridiculously overly honest. And I know people will have a problem with it, but there's a reason why I am. And so I can actually touch on these topics and the mentality of things and who was doing what. And who pushed me to do things or who did those things yada 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 so that's why i was like oh no we need to bring it up because there's a lot of bad in that early portion of gen i mean the gen x portions i was like oh my god H how did we get to that well if you go back into the baby boomer era that was the whole thing is just to go fucking sock a woman and go just take her and they romanticize this behavior and then it just got really psychopathic it just got I don't know. There's a, um, a buildup to this conduct. And then men tend to be the ones that get violent the most. I mean, I'm sure there were some women that do. But I mean, generally speaking, it, the men get all violent because they, they expect that you are supposed to submit to what they want. Women don't technically have that type of mentality. It's sort of like eh, they don't want us. I'm pissed off. You know, it's kind of this thing. Men have this expectation. He's like, hey, I'm so-and-so, and you're going to, you know, get over to my side here. You know, regardless if you want to or not. And he doesn't see the wrong in it, and nor did anybody point it out. That's the other part of it. Because I was like, even though he was a predator right here, if she pointed it out to him, and then maybe it would have changed this whole thing of a lot of things out here. But nobody pointed out, she, the interviewer doesn't see a problem with stalking. That's the thing that's crazy about this interview. It's not even, he's a total stalker and he's a predator. She's fine with it too, and so is Lisa. Everybody's a, and part of this thing. So what it tells me, and what we know because of the past and people's actions, is that both these women would do it as well and not see the problem in it. Unfortunately, that's the truth of it. Because otherwise, they would look at this and go, this is hella creepy and bad. And Michael needs to get the hell out of here. He needs to go to a doctor. You know, you would do this thing. You know, so the, so the interviewer is not going, Michael, you don't think anything sounds off about what you just said here? Yeah, but 1985, no all of us like i think everybody got under this thing here and so but no when i when i was going through this uh when was it in 2016 somewhere around there 20 oh no no uh maybe uh i don't know it was a while ago when i was going through it when i heard it for the first time after a million years i was like this interview is so hella wrong it's 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 atrocious and this is what they consider normal men stalking little girls yep yeah makes claim on a seven-year-old. That was the last time he seen her. I'm going to marry her. I was like, oh, yeah. And actually, that is historical. That part is historical. I was reading through all this stuff because we we're trying to figure out like the 14-year-old father thing. And there's a part of history that has dark history where, and silent history where like you don't know the actual truth because reality is different than what the history books say. And where it's coming out now is like the DNA thing, the ancestry thing. And it's showing like how much incest and rapes were going on throughout people's uh, family history. And I was like, yeah, it would make sense that a whole bunch of 14 year olds were fathers because they didn't have, well, they didn't have protection back in those times. They didn't, all these other things. And then they made laws where it was okay for 12 and 14 year olds to get married. So I was like, well, yeah, then that's very possible that a 14 year old would be a father. Um, yeah, so I was looking at that and yeah, no, I mean, there's things all over the place. But yeah, there's a silent history which has to do with conduct like this. And so the older man, it was normalized for the older man to get a little girl very young. 
and then they marry and then they had kids you know it was like this thing but they were trying to say they waited till they were almost 18. i was like i doubt that even occurred but they were trying to say these things and then um so yeah it was a normalization for him to do what he, he did here because the marriage back then had nothing to do with love they said if love was involved it would be a bonus i'm like that is just human trafficking it's just human trafficking it's like what the hell like the parents just pawning you off to some older guy it's just human trafficking legitimately but they were slave owners so to do that it's part of that thing so i was like okay yeah anyways but this normalization did come from the historical thing and to stalk kids and rape them and do all these things and eat this it's coming from that whole grooming bit of effery from all those people in in historical times yeah it's a hot mess